Yes. Hello, viewers. Welcome yeah. to Diaspora Speak. And today we are speaking about how we come with resolutions. We have had a lot of issues in many families where people have really had issues with their family, killing each other. We've had issues with families whereby we've had children who are not speaking to their parents. That has happened a lot of in the coming years, uh, in the few years. And we have seen now in Britain, the royal family, the drama going on with that family. It has really brought a lot of people to think, what can we do to avoid this? kind of problems in our families. So Tyrone, as one of man I respect so much, a man of God in Germany, you do a lot of work. We appreciate you. On Face of Kenya, you've stood with us for many years and we know that you really stand for the community. What is your input on this issue of family conflicts and resolutions? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, with you today. I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all those uh, mothers in London and UK area and England. And just happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, God bless you. Um, so on this topic of, of, of family conflict, uh, what can we do um, to, re, uh, to resolute this problem? What can we do to fix the issue? Well, one of the things is, is that, um, you know, just biblically, it says to train a child in the way which they should go. So this is something that needs to happen first and foremost. As a father, I have a three-year-old daughter and my wife is presently pregnant now, um, moving into the eighth month. And so one of my responsibilities as a husband is to make sure that I train my child in the way that um, she should go. That way, if she was to depart from the faith, if she was to, to go out and get, and get lost out there, she would know her way back. Um, to a place where there is peace, where there is love, where there is joy, where there is happiness. And the only way, only way that we can have this joy, peace, love, and happiness is if we're happy in our own life. Um, you know, it's a simple thing that it says, love thy neighbor as thyself, but that thyself is very important. In a lot of relationships, people don't love themselves. They get in a relationship, but they have a problem with loving themselves first. And so this is something that is an issue. Um, so, uh, and also an issue, people get quick into relationships and they find out that the person doesn't have the same vision or the same direction that they wanna, um, that, that the person is willing to go in, be it be husband, be it be wife. You know, it says, how can two walk together unless they agree? And so there has to be a type of communication, a level of communication for people to understand that they have to walk in agreement. They have to walk in love. And this thing has to then permeate into the, uh, the children. The children have to see that love. They have to experience that love. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of issues and we're gonna, I, I'm quite sure we're gonna unpack a lot today on what you're gonna talk about and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I just will uh, 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 yield right now and, and just hear what else you have to say. I was going to talk about, there's been a big issue with abuse and I like what you have talked about, getting to know the person better before you get into relationship. But most people have really been in love to start with and when they start living together and the challenges of life has happened, you get people talking about abuse at home because maybe the challenges in your life has reached to a place you can't handle. Some people are talking about disagreements as a result of maybe career choices that are happening in the home. We've got some people are very jealous and that jealousy again, bring conflicts at home. Some siblings is all about competition, much competition. So that again, and finding a way to gel the people is what my question is on about today. As a people of God, God has told us we cannot love God before we love his people. You can't say you love God if you don't love your brother and your sister. Where has that love gone? Do you think money and competition has something to do with it? That disappearance of love between brother, sister, mother, son, mother, daughter, and even husband and wife. Do you think finance has something to do with it? Uh, yes, I do. I, I think I think it's a, a very big issue. 
we can just look back um, to the uh, this, to the story of the prodigal son. You know, he was already in the house. He was already had everything that he needed, but he wanted his inheritance early. You know, and he decided that he said, "Dad, give me my inheritance." And he left and he went out. And then he was—he ended up, you know, just wrecking his whole entire life. And then what happened on his way back home, of course, the father welcomed him back home, but there was jealousy in the house. The older brother was jealous because they threw a party for the, for the son that was gone out and came back. And, you know, and so he's like, why are you doing this? And so, um, you know, he said, well, you have been in the house with me all, all this time. This is my son that was lost, but now is found. And so even in our relationships today, even in, 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 in people's relationships today, we can see the jealousy between siblings, between sisters and brothers. Um, it's, it's, it's a type of envy. We can see that family members have actually, um, you know, even, you know, it, it's a shame, but we hear it, that the mother may show favoritism to one child and not the other one, or, or the father may show favoritism to another child and not the other one. But the thing that we need to understand when it comes into motherhood and fatherhood, no one has the manual for that. No one, everybody's relationship is something different. If you're a first time mother, no, you can try to read all the books you try to read, but you know, if you're a first time father, no <laughs> one, no one has the manual for that. But I remember when my daughter was born, I was like, wow, now what God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> now, now, now what do I do? You know? Um, and so even in that, even in that, we have to understand, we don't need to put too much weight on um, mothers and fathers, um, children, um, that act out and, and, you know, we, we never, we weren't prepared for that. We're not prepared for, oh, what happens when my kid um, um, starts to act out and starts to do things that are, you know, um, not respective to the parent, mm -hmm. you know, this comes in the training part, train a child in the way they should go. And, and, and then hopefully that they will learn. You know, we have to start to sit down with our children again at the table and not just one parent in one room and another parent in another room. And yeah. you're watching TV while another parent is watching TV. And this is in a child's in their room on their video game and nobody's <laughs> sitting at the table again. Nobody's sitting at the table talking about what's happened through the day. How are you? How are you feeling? Are you okay? You know, now it's all about me, me, me. And oh, yeah. it's not about everybody coming together and working together, you know? And so I, I just think there's a lot of issues of the reason why there's envy and the reason why there's jealousy. You know, these things are supposed to be sat down and talked about at the table. And it's okay to have a disagreement. It's okay to have a, a slight argument at the table. That's the place where we need to have it, you know, not, not until something happens really um, in somebody's life where it's too late, where it's too yeah. late. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah, I mean, you have seen, you know, you Americans, I love the way you you like to follow the crown. You've seen the story of our queen and Meghan and what have you. And I, I, I only go there because I listened to the video and I could hear Harry talking about his dad, talking about his brother and all that. And it's not a unique story. So when the situation has reached to a level where you realize as an adult, they have escalated because this... Um, um, problems don't just come out within one day. This is family problems. You can actually start seeing the signs. You can start seeing the sign. So as adults, as a people, what do you think we should do? Because according to me, I don't think we are addressing the problem. I think probably our ego is standing on the line of, I, would I am a winner. I would rather win this, this beef than me just, you know, letting, bringing myself down. That's a humility has gone out of the window. So as a family man, how do you think people should really deal with their conflicts in terms of reaching out at an early age? What areas do you think people need to address at home, in the family, as a wider community? What do you think? Okay, um, you know, uh, I, I would think also in, 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 in this area that we have to look at... Um, you know, the beginning of a relationship once again. Let, let's look at the beginning of a relationship. When people um, today get involved in a relationship, they don't no longer court. 
it's a word called courting, you know, where you're supposed to learn the person and, 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 and but we do it backwards. We do it backwards. If, 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 you, if you look at a, a wedding cake, there are tears to a wedding cake, you know, and, and the tears to the wedding cake are, are as so. We're supposed to have a God base, your faith base. God is first, you know, and then you must find out the person's intellect, where they are they at intellectually, then their social life, and that's where you get their social life, then their family life, who is involved in their family, and then you can start talking about wedding. And, and, and you know, um, then you can start talking about, you know, all these other things, you know, um, 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 intimacy and so. But in today's world, the, the, the cake, the wedding cake is turned upside down. And we start off with um, 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 having the intimacy first. And then we want to know, okay, who's your family? And then we want to know who's your friends. And then we want to know, okay, did you go to school? And what did you do? And so on. And then later on the top, we want to know, okay, um, do you believe in God? Do you believe in anything? And by this time, the oh, cake oh. can easily fall over to one yeah. side to the other. And, you know, and it can just top over. And this is the reason why a lot of relationships um, are in trouble today, because they don't have a foundation. They don't have that good foundation on what do you believe? And I tell you, and what do I believe? And are we walking on the same path? Once again, I have to come back to it. How can two walk together unless they agree? And so and that comes in. And this is the reason why there's conflict. But the, a person doesn't know who they're with till two or three years later, till four or five years later, they wake up in bed and looking like, who is this person? I don't know them, you know, because they never had that foundation. Wow, wow, that foundation. And many people are not seeking that foundation. Many people are not seeking help even from anybody to create a foundation because I believe when our mothers and our fathers were growing up, there was a lot of wisdom around them on how to handle their families. People used to go for teachings. When you decide you're going to get married or you decide you're gonna marry somebody, people used to go for training, not just training like family would, Find a way to guide you around it. Now, what is that guidance? And in fact, if you look at you where you are and you're looking for somebody to help you walk away to, you know, you're having a conflict with your wife, who do you go to? Because I know my mom used to have her great grandmother. She used to have her uncle, her auntie. They were always available. But nowadays, families have created some boundaries and borders that really before I reach my uncle or my auntie, I would need to make a number of phone calls I would need to make appointment. So that kind of extended family support has gone missing. Yes, we are talking about that lack of extended family. I mean, I remember when, I, I, again, my people were talking about my grandmother was there for me. Nowadays, grandmothers are also, you know, trying to look good. I don't have a lot of time for my great grandchildren, for my grandchildren, because I, me, 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 like you said before. So extended family, you as Tyrone, and your daughter, your son, where are you going to go for that support if you need it? Yes, yes, that's, that, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. First and foremost, like I said, train a child up in the way that they should go. And my wife, being the, uh, the pastor and preacher and teacher of my home, I need to tell my family and teach my family the first place that we need to go to is in prayer. Okay, that's the first thing. All right, that's the first thing we need to go through is seek um, seek God for my family is we need to take everything to God in prayer. And it starts at the table. Like, again, it starts in the table before we eat, we pray, you know, teach my daughter how to pray. When something happens, the first thing I need to do, okay, let's come together and pray. For so it starts in prayer first. And then after that, of course, I have the wisdom of the mother. It's a good thing that you talked about that it's Mother's Day. And I, I thank God that my mother is still in the land of the living. And um, um, I can always call up my mom. I'm a mama's kid. So um, I'm, I'm one of those guys that my mama knows everything. I tell her everything, every little detail, everything what's going on. And sometimes she says, that's too much, son. I don't need to hear all of that. But she's able to give me some wisdom. And sometimes I don't like what she says, but that's the part of being a parent. 
You know, that's a part of, of having that support group or someone you can go to. I even have a bishop that I go to or someone that I could go to in my life, that support group. And they know most likely they, they will rebuke me. They will tell me the things that I'm doing wrong. They will say, look, I know that you want to do it this way, but that's not the way to do it. And I just want to put this in a tidbit when it comes to relationships real quick. You know, it says that, you know, in the Bible, everybody has a, a, a problem with it says when it says that the wife should submit to the husband. And then it says the husband should submit to the wife as Christ loves the church. The thing is that what people don't understand, the wife, she has to submit. But the man, the husband, he has to do what Christ did. He has to die to himself. You know, the things that I want to do and the things that I want to have and all that stuff, I have to die to myself in order to make my wife happy. In other words, they say a happy wife is a happy life. And the only way you can get that if you die to yourself. So it takes a level of humility, just like you said. And um, um, in families, it takes, a, it takes a level of humility to say, okay, I am wrong. I'm not, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Let's go to someone who does. Let's go to someone who's been married 50 years. Let's go to someone that has some, um, that has some essence in their relationship to be able to help us. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. That is really good. I agree with you when you say you're a mama's boy because I saw I saw today you, you you even was talking about your grandmother, your mother, and I was I was loving that because you know for us women we go very, very emotional. But to see a man of God really getting there and you know celebrating their mom publicly, it is one yeah. thing that <laughs> that is big with me. And yeah. now Personally, if you collide with one of your family, if you collide with your mother, what steps do you take or what that step does she take to make it better with you? So as people can actually buy from you, I've seen you've got a good relationship with them. People can buy. I'm pretty sure you've had a time there. You and your mom have raised, you know, voices at each other. I'm pretty sure it has happened because it has happened to me. So what steps did you take or did she take to make it better? Oh, wow. Uh, my, you know, my mom did something that was very good. She, she, you know, my mom's someone who was tell you, you know, the devil is a liar or, you know, I, re I rebuke that spirit off your life, you know. So my, yeah. my mom is, is, is a sanctified saint. She doesn't play around. But one of the things, seriously, seriously, one thing that um, always happens is that, you know, um, we always forgive one another. We've had times that we've had our disagreements, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, we never know when we're just going to be gone. We never know when, we're, you know, we take that last breath. And the Bible says we should honor our mother and our father and our days shall be long. So um, I'm always, you know, saying, okay, mom, I don't understand it, but can you hear me what I'm saying? So she'll hear what I'm saying and then she'll go, okay, I need you to hear what I'm saying. So it's, it's, it, it comes down to a relationship. It comes down to communication. You know, because if not, that resentment can be for years. I can tell you, I, I came up in a broken home. My dad was off. My mom was off. And, I, you know, I was a kid who thought that it was my fault, the reason why they had got the divorce. And then I found out that it wasn't, it had nothing to do with me. It had something to do with um, um, adultery, you know, and, 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 the, and the family. And my mom raised me by herself. And then this is where the hurt came in. I went to stay with my father for the summer and I ended up staying with my father and not going back to my mother. And that affected my mom in such a way that um, it broke her heart. Her son left her and she didn't know why. And so this is one of those things where it comes into communication. It wasn't, it didn't happen right away, but years later, she shared with me how that broke her heart. Now for me, I was young. And all I wanted to do was get back to my friends that I knew when they were together. I just wanted to go back to my friends I knew. Because when, when they got divorced, they, she took me away from the area that I was comfortable to. Oh, and so it was not till later that we were able to have that communication, sit down and have that, that mother and son talk and be able to talk about what exactly was going on, what exactly was happening. And this is what's important. So if there's anything that I can give, if there's any Holy Ghost nugget that I can share with you, it would be, it would be this. 
Communicate. And don't wait one month. Don't wait two months. Don't wait one year or two years. Get down and communicate. Somebody has to humble themselves and just say, okay, I'm willing to listen. You know, even if it's betrayal, even if it's betrayal, you know, you're not even allowed to go bring your gift to the altar unless you go make it right with your brother or your sister or your mom and stuff. You know, you can't even take communion or the last supper. So it's something that's very important. We need to go and make it right with that person. It need, Sometimes when that happens, you release yourself. If you don't forgive a person, here's what happens. That person continues to have the power over you and your mm-hmm. life will, you, mm-hmm. you, can, you can heap sickness on yourself because of a lack of forgiveness, because of resentment, because of envy. And we have a lot of people in the community that are suffering from diseases. They don't need to be. Mm-hmm. They can free themselves up if they just would go to the person and say, forgive them or forgive me, and they would make it right. And then they would be able to sleep at night. That's all I have to say. Wow, wow, wow. Free yourself up. You know what? That's really amazing. That's amazing keyword. Free yourself up. Because some people have tied themselves for 10 years, 20 years with anger that they have really lost relationships they might had before because of that anger, which could probably have been dealt with at a very, very young age. I like the fact that you talked about broken families and you came from a broken family and how difficult that was for you as a young person. There's a lot of young people, especially like even here in Britain, who are living a life whereby the parents have really separated. What do you think they can do to make life better for their child? Because, you know, when you get together, there's so much love. And when that love break in a marriage, some people have shattered dreams and some uh, emotional damage are very, very hard to make it better so as you can be caring for the child. But that child who's as a result of a broken home will have not developed emotionally to handle that. What is your really advice on the families, the dad and the mom who are going through a divorce on how they can really support their child better to deal with the breakup? Oh, wow. This is an amazing topic. I, I, you know, I enjoy hearing this and I do have something to share on that topic. You know, one of the things they can do is give their child a hug. I know that may sound real crazy and simple, but the one thing they can do is give the child a hug. I'm talking about the father bringing the child to them and hugging them. I'm talking about the mother bringing the child to them and hugging the child and let them know that they are loved. Because ultimately, if they do not hug the child because they have resentment between the mother or resentment between the father, if they have a problem with it, what happened is the child will start to do things for attention. The child will start to do things for attention. They may go out and do things trying to get the parent's attention, the love or or the attention from the parent that they need. And the parent can stop that right away if they just hug them, bring them to them, spend time with them. Don't you know, um, if there's a problem between the mother and father, that doesn't mean there has to be a problem between the mother and the child or the father and the child. And so I can tell you also that from my experience, one of the things that I had to do to to get my parents' attention, which um, um, affected me later on in my life, I became an overachiever. I became an overachiever. I had to be someone that needed to uh, um, do something grandiose, something real big. You know, being a veteran in the military, I couldn't just be in the military. I had to be airborne. I had to be a combat and diver. I had to be the best of the best in the special operations unit. You know, I had to be this, still trying to get the parents' attention. You know, I couldn't just be um, on the football team. I had to try to be the football star, the track star, trying to get their approval, trying to get their acceptance, acceptance. But I'm telling you now, that can really ruin a person later on in life because that person is always going to be trying to overachieve to get people's attention. And it's, it's going to cause them to fall and get up and fall and get up and fall and get up. So the most important thing that I believe that a parent can do is love on their child. Let them know every day, I love you. Walk with them. Go on walks with them. It doesn't have to be grandiose things, 
but just spend time with them. Go sit down in the room and play a game with them. Go sit down and listen to what they say. You know, not just sitting behind a TV, but do something active with the child that they can understand that they are truly, honestly loved. This will go a long way. This will go a tremendous long way. And if you don't, if the parent ignores the child because they are hurt in the relationship with the mother or the father, what will end up happening, that child then will become resentful. You know, not just trying to be an overachiever, they will become resentful, resentful towards the parent. So one of the parents they're going to have a hatred for. Oh, I hate them. I hate this because they broke up my happiness that I had. They broke up the joy that I had. And so these things need to be addressed. Not just, you know, not just um, in the house, but sometimes professionally. Get professional help from doctors or counselors that can walk them through the scenario. Amen? Wow. Fabulous. Don't, you know, hug that child. Love that child. And from my community work, I can tell you, do not use that child as a currency to hurt the other person. Because a lot of people have really tried to, you know, negotiate. You can't see the child on Saturday, Sunday. Oh, no, I, I am very busy. So they use the child as a currency. Like, I want you to hurt as much as I am hurting. Do not do that. Because the child start blaming themselves and many times i've seen from a teaching perspective when i met children who blamed themselves for their parents breakup because they're not emotionally mature to understand it's nothing to do with them and i think these words have to be spoken categorically and intentionally to your child tell them that the breakup is nothing to do with you and yeah. it's important for that to happen now I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. It doesn't matter what I do. I just want to be a millionaire. And that is what we are finding with our children, with our community, with everybody we know. What has money done to our community spirit, Tyrone? Oh, money has really, really, really um, 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 made people see um, something that is uh, uh, very difficult to um you know, to, to get to reality, you know, to bring people to a place of reality. Money has been deceptive. Um, uh, people have allowed money to be deceptive. There's nothing wrong with having money in the right, um, in the right uh, um, um, position, in the right place. There's nothing wrong with it. But when you're chasing that mighty money, that, that mighty dollar, that mighty pound, or that mighty euro, when you're chasing the money, um, there's something that comes along with that, you know? Um, you know, there, there are what they call uh, hell's angels, um, you know, and, and why would somebody want to be a hell's angel? And they say, you know, I had a friend, I asked them, why would somebody want to do that? And they said, that's because they can get all what they can right now because they know that when they die, it's over when it's finished. Yeah. So they want to get all that they can right now. They want to get everything that they can now. And so, you know, and this it's is- not enough, is it? Yeah, and, it, and it's still not enough. And so this is what's so good about coming to God, because God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. So the thing is, the focus on the money is in the wrong direction. You got to focus on what God has for you, what your call of God is on your life, and focus on building the kingdom of God, and then everything else will be added unto you. And it just has to be in the right balance. You know, I've seen, um, I've been also, I can talk about that too. I've been in a position where um, I had tons of money. You know, um, I, you know, I wouldn't say that I was uh, making more than Bill Gates, but I mean, uh, I was making money where uh, I was, you know, for a person where I came from, it was a lot of money. I was making $675 a day. And this was over a period of time, just the money was coming in. And I found out that, you know, money, does it bring affect, happiness? Did that affect your character? Did yes, that affect it did. Relationships? Yes, it did. It affects everything around me. What happened? Pride comes. This word you said earlier, E-G-O, -E ego, this edging God out, my head just got bigger, and I thought that I was some type of God, and I could do this and buy this and tell people this and make people do things with money. But um, I'm telling you what, it, at the end of the day, I can't take any of that with me. I can't take none of those things with me. It's good to have if you're a person who um, wants to be an entrepreneur and you want to open up a business, it's always good to do those things. For instance, I, like I said, I have a three-year-old daughter 
and it's something uh, my, while my wife is on the eighth month. I want to leave something behind for my children. I want to leave a legacy behind for my children. That's totally okay. I don't want them to have to go through some of the things that I went through. You know, that's fine. But when the kids are wanting to, that fast money, I, they want to go out and sell drugs. They want to go out and sell cocaine and heroin and all these other things to get this money because they find out that, oh, I, instead of going to work a regular job, Mm -hmm. I can just go out on the street and make the same money and that I would make in six months. I can make that in one week. So, you know, they have this appeal to them, but they don't know that comes with a cost. They can lose their freedom. And there's nothing more important than your freedom. Why would I want to give up my freedom? Is money more than freedom? No. Freedom is very important. This is something that is given to us. And this is something that the parents need to let the kids know. Hey, if you go down this road, you could give up your freedom. You could actually give up your whole entire life. And the end result is, and the money, they're going to take it away. And you'll be behind bars and you'll be kicking yourself in the butt saying, why did I make those decisions? Why did I decide to go chase after that fast money? You know, um, it's better to work hard for your money. It's, it's better to get a good credit so you can do things. It's better to be a part of society instead of working against society. And not only that, why do I want to tear somebody down? Why do I want to tear somebody down with the drugs and with all that stuff when I should be building somebody up? You know, I should be wanting to help somebody and, and push them in the right direction. But instead, when you want to go in with the fast money, it ends up destroying somebody's life. That's all I want to say on that topic. <laughs> wow. You know what? You said it's absolutely correct because it becomes an addiction. And I'm why I brought that topic of money is because most of the things we've seen, family conflicts are, are brought about mostly because of money, mostly because of inheritance. There's going to be some family breakup that can never be uh, you know, returned back to where they were because they have never resolved the issue of money. And I believe it's going to get to a place where we need to really have good conversation with each other as men of God, as people of God, as one community and actually say, when we are really mentoring our children, let them think about their you know, ability to enjoy it life without thinking always it's about money because i know if when i was growing up tyron we had nothing much mm -hmm. i know that my brothers and sisters can agree with this but one thing we had our mother who was always happy our neighbors were well to do she did not compare her life with my neighbors she did not do that but nowadays there's a lot of comparison there's yeah. a lot of i want to be like janet I want to be like Tyron. And you forget that everybody has their life to live. Enjoy where you are, enjoy where God has placed you. So for me today, I will say for the issue of money and inheritance, there's a big conversation there to be spoken about to our children, because I want to tell them, grow up and be your own person without having yeah. to look back at what mommy and daddy can do. Now, I always say understanding each other, like today when I was in church, I was talking about being able to be the gel between family. And that means you make yourself intentionally available for people who are falling out. So it looks like when I have a brother and I know my brother is not talking to the other brother, I will give myself a job as a Christian, as a woman of God, I give myself a job to actually go and gel those people. You know, do a job where you know that I am a peacekeeper. How can we really inject that idea of peacekeeping in people of God? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Being a peacekeeper, being a peacekeeper, being someone that wants to um, keep peace in the family and try to keep the family gelling together. Um, that also comes down with communication, being able to be the third party. If there's two people that are having a problem, bring them together, bring them together and sit down. You know, one of the things that, you know, biblically, it says that if you have a problem with a brother or sister to go with them um, first alone and talk to them. And then if it doesn't work to bring two or three people along with you and, you know, and, and bring them and sit down, too, so that there's somebody that can um, um, waver the things that are going in between someone that can be able to uh, discern 
the things that are happening. You're always good to have an outside party that's listening so they can be able to bring that gel together. You know, so I, I commend you on that, wanting to get into the middle of it and to bring the family. A lot of people don't want to get in between um, family disputes. You know, they want to stay out of it. They're like, that's not my business. That's your business. But as a brother in Christ, as a sister in Christ, it is our duty to keep the peace. It's okay to go and talk to someone and, and try to bring a resolution to the issue. Um, yeah, I, I, I just commend you on that. It, it, it's, I commend you on that. Really, I really do. I think Thank that's you. amazing that you're able to go in and keep the jail in the family. You know, my mom is that. She has 10 siblings. She has 10 siblings. And there have always been um, different issues that have happened amongst the family. There's been always problems that have happened. And she's always been the one that goes there in between them, that prays with them, gets them to talk to one another, and brings the family back together. She is that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's always good to have that in the family. But if a person doesn't have that and they find themselves in a struggle, they need to have a support group. They need to have somebody that can um, um, be, a, be the third ear, so to speak, um, in, in the relationship. Fabulous, fabulous. And now talking about that bit where you've got to know what you personally have to do. I can categorically tell you there are people that I know that every time I see them, I will get that itch. You know, there are people who really like spoil your spirit. You don't like it. You like it or not. I mean, anytime you meet them, there's going to say something that really brings your brain into a place where you don't want to go. I call them emotional baggage because over the years, <laughs> you really, <laughs> you really kept the emotions, the, the baggage there that this person, when you see them, they bring that then we're going to ask ourselves how do we feel that emotional baggage and let go so as we can clear our heart number two is repeated patterns there are people that i know they annoy me but their behavior is always the same and i mm -hmm. respond always the same way every time they behave a different way i also know that i am the person who can make my own i can't control tyrone if tyrone annoys me Every time, I can't control you, but I can control how I respond to you annoying me. So the, the, the idea I'm bringing to you right now is uh, how do you build yourself skills to be able to handle those annoying people around you so as you don't carry emotional baggage with you? Well, this is an awesome question. You know, one of the things that happens is this, is that I, um, um, uh, I've learned a long time ago and it took me a while to, 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 to see this. This is one of, this is just a flip side to that. It took me a while to understand this, that if I have encountered somebody and I'm around them on a daily basis or I'm around them um, often, and every time I get around that person, something just bothers me. I'm like, it's just something about that person. I just don't know what it is. Oh, they got to get out of this room. They got to get out. I don't know what it is. I just don't even want to see them. I want to cross over to the other side of the street. Yeah. Well, what I found out, you know, in, in, in my short walk that I've had um, here on this earth is that, you know, a lot of times what that person, the thing that bothers me is the thing that is in me and I recognize it and I have to work it out. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes I see something they bother me. So why does this person bother me so much? It's because I'm actually looking at myself in the mirror of something that I don't like about myself. And that person is showing me myself. You understand what I'm saying? Like yes, I'm seeing yeah. the bad part of me and I don't like it. And so I'm like, oh, I don't like being around that person because they're revealing um, 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 something about me that I don't like. That's one side of it, though. I, you know, I, I've had that happen, you know. And then when I realized, wow, I, I'm the same way. And that's actually me, you know, um, <laughs> and, and I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I, I got, and I humble myself and say, wow, I had all this uh, hatred towards this person or this, this thing toward this person, but basically they were just holding up in the mirror and showing me, Hey, this is what you look like, you know, and the person never even did anything to me. They never, you know, they are nice to me and friendly to me. And I'm just like, Oh, wow. I just can't, what is it about this person? You know, but they're showing me, they're showing um, um, something that I need to work on in my life. And that's just, that's just one avenue. There are many um, doors to that situation, but that's just one thing that I've noticed. Fabulous. Now, I, that's a good one. Learning to criticize yourself 
is actually a strong point for anybody. It's not logical for any, I mean, it's not natural for somebody to criticize themselves. We always think we are the best in what we do. And if you can get to a place where you criticize yourself, that means you're reaching my emotional maturity and you'll be able to handle other people and support other people during their conflict because you know you found a way of not really bringing your emotion and adding them to the issues that are happening in those families. And what I would like to say now is like, people who want to get along from a very young age, as a woman, today is Mother's Day. As a woman, I say number one, develop family rules and values. Family rules and values. My daughters will know there are things we do as a family. And even if I'm not there, they will be feeling really bad if they engage in things that they know is away from our family values. So we need to build family values in the community as well as we're building them in our houses. Number two, encourage and model empathy and kindness. If I want people to be kind to me and empathetic about me, I've got to model it. I've got to show them how to be empathetic and uh, model conflict resolutions that are healthy. So even if it's with your children, like you've got a young child right now, believe me, you, I'm sure they have started owning their space and yeah. they're gonna be conflict between them too. So yeah. modeling healthy conflict resolution, respecting the fact that even as young as one year old child has got a brain of themselves and they're thinking for themselves. So for you as an adult, what is, you know, or rather as a family man, what advice would you give to people who are starting to build, to start their families now ways to bring up children who in future will stand up for the community. Oh, wow. This, this is one thing that's awesome. It, the biggest thing is by example, by example, you know, sometimes we can read a Bible all the time and, 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 and quote scripture and do all kinds of things like that. But some things um, uh, people can just read a Bible just by how you read, uh, how you uh, live your life. They can see how you live. And that's also with our children. If we can um, um, ex be an example of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, allow the Spirit of God to move in our life with the love, the peace, the joy, the kindness, the meekness, the temperance, to have all these different things of the fruits of the Spirit operating in our families, then the, the child will see that. They will see that and, and, and they will be effective in their in the city that they live in or in the town that they live in. Don't put a bushel over the light that's in the child. Let the light shine so that uh, people would glorify their father who's in heaven. You know what I mean? So, I mean, let the light shine. Encourage a child. You know, let them know that they are valuable. You talked about having value. How do we instore, uh, uh, inst uh, installate this, this value in our families? Let the know, let the child know that they are valuable. They are very valuable to them, that they are needed, that they have purpose in the family and that they are actually part of the family. Don't leave them out on the street to try to learn everything on their own. It's OK. They're going to fall down. We're going to pick them up. We're going to put the Band-Aid on them. But still, let them know that they are loved. You know, it doesn't go a day that I don't tell my daughter that I love her. It doesn't go a day that I don't hug her and let her know that, hey, I love you. You're beautiful. You're awesome. I love you. And I squeeze her and I hold her. And I want to continue that out throughout my the, the days that I have on earth, you know, and my wife does that too. It's not just me, but it's my wife that does that too. And, and this allows this relationship to build and to be stronger. Now, get me, don't get me wrong. My daughter is three and she is really testing us right now. She is really testing us. This test is coming. The conflicts are coming in the house. She's throwing stuff down and saying, no, this is what I want. This is what I want it. And this is how I want it. You know, and so she's trying to be the CEO of the home. She's trying to be the captain and the boss of the home. But we have to put her in her place and let her know, yes, this is your home, but you have to respect mother and father. So we have to say no sometimes. Sometimes we have to say no, and it hurts. Oh, it hurts me to tell my daughter no. It hurts me, these values to instill to the family, it's really, really hard. Sometimes I just don't wanna say no, especially when she she, she blinks her, her, her puppy eyes and she's like, daddy, can I please? And I'm like, look, don't ask, don't say another please because you know I'm gonna say yes. 
Your mom said no. I said no. Just let it be no. And she would just sit there. And I cannot take it sometimes. I really can't. You know, and then I was like, okay, I'll wait another 30 minutes. Yes, go ahead. You can have an ice. Go ahead and get it. And my wife will be so upset. Why did you just hold it? Why did you just hold back? And I'm like, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm weak when it comes to that. You know, um, uh, and, and I think our Father in Heaven is the same way. He shows so much grace and mercy over our life. We don't never get what we deserve. We get more than that. He shows us so much more. And if we have a relationship with God, that should also permeate in our family, to our children, to our wife. You know, there was one time when I was in a relationship um, and the values wasn't so good. You know, I was married before and, and I ended up in a divorce, you know, and um, one of the things that happened, you know, I, I would, you know, I didn't want to, to, to say this, but it was, it was an abusive relationship. And the reason why it was abusive is that I didn't like myself and I couldn't take it out on anybody. So I took it out on her verbally, you know? She didn't like herself and she couldn't take it out on nobody. So she took it out on me verbally. So we were very abusive to each other because we didn't have an understanding of, of who we were. We wanted to compare ourselves, like you said, to someone else on the outside, comparing ourselves out, comparing ourselves in, wanting to always to be like Mr. Jones. Why can't we be over with the Joneses? Why can't we be like them? Why can't we do this and all that stuff? And so what happens is this, this, this self-hatred, the, the low self-esteem starts to creep in. And then those values get, and, and the relationships start to break down and it becomes abusive. It really becomes abusive. And so it, it, it comes, it all comes back to, we have to really come to a place of love. Loving one another, another is the biggest key. Just really, truly, honestly loving one another and showing that love to one another. And don't worry about what other people are doing in their marriages but take your marriage to God who ultimately loves you more than you would ever know. And he can fix any problem in any situation if we just would yield to him, not just confess with our mouth, but believe it in our heart that he is who he is. And he can come in and he can mend the brokenhearted. He can mend the relationship. A lot of people have prematurely divorced when they didn't have to divorce. If they would have just understood that there was a certain love and that they could actually have forgiveness. And sometimes if they would have stayed together, the relationship would have been even stronger than, we, than it was before. It's just like when someone breaks a bone and the bone rebuild, uh, rebuilds itself back up, it's actually stronger than what it was before. You know, and so sometimes these broken things that happen, the first thing that we want to do is run because we don't have any values in the, in, in the marriage or in the relationship. And, it, and the biggest value, the biggest thing that I can impart on today is prayer. Is I'm telling you, it's in prayer. The husband and wife need to have a prayer life with the child also. And then everything go take to God in prayer and you will see things start to happen. Fabulous. Well, do you want your heart? Always allow yourself to say no, even if it's to your family, to your children. Whenever you need to say no, however hard it is, say no. Tyrone, I'm so happy that you shared that, you know, the issue about your previous marriage and, the, you know, the abuse. It's not easy for many people to come up with that and actually share it out loud. And we Black people, I was going to say that, I wasn't going to use that line, but I will tell you the truth. We Black people have got a problem with talking about our mental health. We have a problem with actually going to professional counselors and actually really seeking help when we need help, either for conflict or for our own mental health. Why do you think there's such a huge, uh, what we get, people really feel difficult to actually go out and talk until things have really broken completely. Why is that delay? Yes, yes. The, the reason why people are not open in transparency today, the reason why there isn't transparency, um, you know, without transparency, um, you, you're looking to fall, you're looking to fail. You're looking to um, uh, get in a place where uh, everything is happening, whatever what happens in the dark. But we know whatever happens in the dark would eventually come to light. And sometimes it's just too late. You know, it's just too late. But if we're transparent, let me tell you something. If we're transparent, 
we now shine light on that thing and the devil or the enemy or anybody that's operating in the spirit that of dissension that come to kill, steal and destroy no longer has his power mm -hmm. because now we don't put that thing on the table. We don't put some light on it and now we can get the help that we need. It's when we start isolating ourselves and start isolating ourselves from um, um, things that are happening in our life the things start to get worse. And, and, and you know, we can see people yeah. get into mental problems and mental situations and, and anxieties and depressions and oppressions just because they did not open up and they try to hold it all up in the inside. And then it just goes off like a, it ignites like a bomb. And then by that time, we're like, what was the breakdown? What happened? You know, and then they have to go back. And, 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 and start to speak about those things that happened in their life and try to repair when they should have opened up a long time ago. But I got good news for you. I got good news for you on this topic, you know? Um, when, 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 when that happens, um, we don't have to um, worry about blame and shame when we come to God. As a Christian, we don't have to worry about blame and shame. Okay, when we go into the doctor's office and we ask for help, the doctor will say, okay, um, it's your fault. All right. So if you, now we're going to work on 10 steps to help you. So now you go work on 10 steps, how to, 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 to figure out the shame of yourself, how to do everything. And you come back a year later and then they'll say, OK, you've done those steps. Now we're going to work on the things that people done to you. Now we're going to do the blame game. And they'll have you go out for a year and work on your relationship with your parents or your family and all the people that you blame to do things. Then you come back, but you still have the same issue. The anxiety is still there. The depression is still there. And they want to give medications and all this other stuff. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I just need to tell you that blame and shame, check this out now, <laughs> blame and shame has been nailed to the cross. Look, listen to what I'm saying. It has literally been nailed to the cross. We no longer have to blame ourselves. We no longer have to have shame. Whoever the son is set free is free indeed. And so this is one of the things that we have to do in relationship. When we're in a relationship, we have to get off the blame game. We have to get off the shame game. Oh, poor me. Oh, that person did this and that person did that. You know what? You are a new creature in Christ. All things are passed away. All things become new. You don't have to carry the blame and the shame no more. I'm gonna stop there. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Guys, that is Brother Tyrone, our one good friend in Germany, one person who has really lifted us up when we've gone to Germany during our face of Kenya. And you have seen the wealth of knowledge he's bringing to this platform today, the insight, the thoughts, you know, and the advocacy for you to just first and foremost, love yourself and love your spouse and take care of your family. You have listened, you've heard. And I will say to end this bit of the program or to end the program today, please remember the big question was, conflict in the family and how to make resolution. So I would say negotiate, negotiate. Whoever you're struggling with, whoever you're working with, whoever is making you upset, find a way to negotiate what's wrong. Remember what I said before, you can control yourself, you cannot control them. So it's important for you to know that control your feelings, control your reaction, control how you respond to issues. Walk away for a cool off. If you need to do that, then come back later and address the issue because some of these family problems can be addressed if one of us allowed ourselves to stay down the stairs. Remember if we're having a conversation, we're moving up the stairs. Every time I go up, we go up, we go up. If I fall from up the stairs I will, and I fall down, I will probably be dead because the damage will be out of order. But if I refuse to go up the stairs and I put it, I put you know issues at the ground and I stayed at the bottom of the stairs, you, you are going crazy, you're going high and I stayed down, you probably, the only thing you're gonna to have to do is calm down and negotiate with me at the bottom. So I would say for your family relationship, find a way to negotiate when things are not so badly off. So pick up the signs and the signals in your children, in your spouse, in your brothers and your sisters that tells you they're having a problem with you or with something you're doing. Number two, mediate. Find a mediator. I know sometimes relationship can get to a point where you think you're not really communicating. 
find a mediator. And believe me, you, the problem we're having nowadays is the share game. There's so much of networking everywhere that if brother Tyrone comes and tell me he's having a problem with his daughter or with his wife, I'll quickly go on Facebook or Twitter or and share. Find a mediator who's, if they're professional, they will never share. Or if they are good friends, they have your best interest at heart, they will not share your life things. But the biggest picture is here, you addressed it. You mediated. You found some way to mediate. And resolving a conflict means you don't keep going back to it. Because majority of the people, when we just disagree today, I remind Tyrone, in 2015, when we met, this is what you did. We resolved that one, but I never forgive. I never let it go. I bring it back. If you want your relationships to work better, learn to forgive and forget. And last but not least, be that person in this world today that is needed to bring godliness in the world of God because we have seen so much loss going on because people are not living in a godly way. God could get angry with the humans by the way we are addressing ourselves, by the way we are living. So be that person who is bringing godliness to his people. Viewers, conflict and resolution will never finish this sentence or rather this program. We want to see less deaths, we want to see less families killing each other. We want to see more people speaking with each other. And today, if you've been watching the program and you feel you have an issue with somebody, be the one to make the first move. Take your phone, call that person. Yes, difficult it might be, but you'd have made something to save your relationship. I have lost friends. I know how painful that is. But I'm going to be the first person to take the phone, calling them. And even if they switch me off today, I will write a message. I will keep writing because my relationship with them is better than my ego. And I do not want when we have lost a lot of family during COVID season. And we've seen people asking who are their family, people who are living by themselves, especially abroad. We have people who live alone. They have who are their family? reach out to people. Don't go and be there for them when they're dead. They will never know. If you haven't talked to your brother or your sister for five years, two years, and you hear they've passed on, you probably really pay a lot of money to go for their funeral, to do a lot of things for them. Don't wait for that moment. Today is the day for you to bring that conflict to an end. Thank you very much, Brother Tyrone. What is your takeoff word? What is your last message to my people? Uh, the last message to y'all is just um, love God with all your heart. <laughs> um, and, and the biggest one is, uh, I would have to say, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. Just trust God. Take it to God in prayer and uh, see God move in your life. And God has a plan for you, you know, and it's not always to, uh, um, you know, like, like people say, it's not to destroy you. It's to, just so that you can have joy in your life. And, and so just take everything to God in prayer. And I'm um, happy Mother's Day to all those um, here and uh, uh, there in uh, the England. I just, I just thank God for your life, all the mothers. Um, all the, the hard things that you have to go through with the children, you know, um, you know, um, putting pampers on, um, you know, clothing the kids and, and watching them grow up and then walk away from you. And then, you know, have to, mothers have a big job. They're the ones that make everything happen um, for the children. So I just commend all the mothers and, and just God bless you. Bless you too. Thank you so much for your time. Apologies for the hiccups we had before, but God is great because what we've had now is a more heartfelt conversation. So your time on my program today is so much appreciated. Much love and love to your family. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Much love to you too. God bless thank you. Me. Bless you too.